Hey everybody, today we are going to continue on with economics and I'm going to teach you a little bit about some decision making with you individually when you're buying products and then a little bit about the concept of supply and demand. Some of you might have heard of that before and I'm going to try to break it down a little bit and give you some examples. So what you're going to learn today, number one, individual economic decision making. So when you are making purchases in life, things that you need to consider, things you need to think about. Two, what is supply? Number three, what is demand? And finally, how do supply and demand work together? Um, so that's going to be our goal for today. So number one, individual economic decision making. So when you are making a decision that affects your money purchases, when you're trying to buy a product, for example, there are three major things that you're going to want to consider. First, you need to think about the price of whatever item or service or whatever you're purchasing. You need to think about the quality of that service or product. And you also need to think about the benefits that that product provides to you. Um, so when you're thinking about these three um, parts of the decision-making process, some of this is going to have more priority than others, and it depends on what item you're actually thinking about. So a quick example of this. Let's say I wanted to buy paper plates, something very random, right? So paper plates come in all different styles, all different qualities, different things like that, and all different prices. So when you're thinking about the price of a paper plate, something like this might be a little bit cheaper. You might be able to buy a pack of these of 20 for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. However, the quality of this paper plate might not be as high quality. So it depends on really what you're using it for, which is going to be into the benefits part. So this is going to be really great if you are going to want to use it for an art project, if you're painting on it, or if you just have quick snacks or popcorn, things like that. So if you're using it for quick purposes, this is probably the way to go because it's cheaper, um, but the quality is not going to be as good. If you are looking to serve dinner on something that's going to be a little bit more sturdy, you might pay a little bit more money, so the price might be higher, but the quality is going to be better. So it won't fold as easily, or if you're trying to microwave something, it's not going to crumble or melt. So sometimes quality is going to be more important. Um, so the benefits of this type of plate is going to be the sturdiness and just the higher quality. So when you're thinking about something to buy, you have to kind of consider those options. And then another example I was thinking about, let's say I'm talking about water bottles, right? Everybody kind of likes to drink water. Some people like to drink it out of bottles. Some people like to drink it just out of the faucet. It really depends, right? So if you're thinking about just one single water bottle, the price won't be too high. Um, if you're buying it in a big pack at Kroger, it's going to be very, very cheap. If you're buying it at a concession stand, it might be a dollar, right? So if you buy one water bottle, the price isn't super expensive. The quality will be okay. It's going to be normal water. It's going to be in a bottle, but you're probably going to use that bottle once, right? If you're buying just a typical bottle that you would see at a concession stand. And the benefits to that is I can grab and go. I could drink it. I could throw it away and then it's out of my hands. However, once I start buying more and more water bottles like that, technically the price is going to keep increasing in my life, right? So if I have you know, seven water bottles here, that's going to be like $7 if I bought these all at a concession stand, where instead, maybe I could buy instead one water bottle that I could refill that might cost me a little bit more money up front. The price might be higher, but it's also going to probably be able to use over and over. So the benefits of that water bottle might be better. Or I can spend even more money and get one of these fancy water bottles, which the benefits might be greater, right? It might keep my drink colder longer, might keep my water colder longer. So that's a good benefit, but the price is going to be higher. But the quality is also going to be higher. So these are different things you might want to consider when you're making economic decisions. Let's move into topic two. What is supply? This is the first thing that we have in supply and demand. So supply is how much of a product you have available. It's pretty basic. Supply is just how much you have of something. So if I had this many basketballs right here, that means I have 11 basketballs. You can count them. I promise it's 11 right? So my supply of basketballs is 11. So if I was a, maybe a sporting goods store, I might have 11 basketballs that I can sell. Um, let's say I'm a technology store, maybe I'm Verizon, and I have 22 iPhones available to sell, right? Maybe this is the iPhone 8, okay? So the iPhone 8, I have 22 of those in my stock. That means my supply is 22. So basically, it's just the amount of, the amount of product that you have of something. That's what supply means. Then we get into what is demand, all right? Demand is kind of exactly what it sounds like. Demand is how much people want to buy a product. So this is a little bit different, right? So demand is how much people demand it, how much people are wanting it. So maybe like the newest items is sometimes in higher demand because it's a new product to people. So demand is how much people want something. So those basketballs, if I am an 
living in a, maybe a community that's very focused on art and maybe painting and drawing and things like that, the demand for my basketballs might not be very high, right? It might be in very low demand. However, if I live in a community where basketball is the number one sport, then my demand for basketballs might be higher. So you have to kind of think about, you know, where you're at and what type of store you are to figure out how much demand you're going to have for your product. Same thing with the, the phones here, right? Here's the difference between the iPhone 1 and the iPhone 11, which is kind of crazy. They don't look a whole lot different, but there's a lot of different features that the iPhone 11 has that the iPhone 1 doesn't have anymore, right? So the iPhone 1 is probably in low demand. Not many people are going into a store looking for the iPhone 1, and most stores don't even have much of the iPhone 1 anymore. But then iPhone 11, on the other hand, is in high demand. A lot of people want that because it's the newest and the latest, right? I'm very happy with the phone I have. I don't need the iPhone 11, but a lot of people are very, very interested in demanding the newest um, form of the iPhone every single time. So that's just a couple examples there of supply and demand. So now how do they work together? This is really the key of it all. So supply and demand work together to determine the price of different products. So there's some rules and some laws that go along with this. So if there's four basic laws. Typically, if the supply increases, so you have more of a product, and the demand just stays the same, and it's not increase or decrease, the price will probably go down because you have extra product that you're able to sell. Um, if the supply decreases, so you don't have as many, many items anymore, but the demand stays the same, your price will actually be able to go up because you're able to charge more for that item because you don't have as much supply and people are still wanting it. Third rule or third law, if a supply stays the same, so if you have the same amount of a supply but the demand is increasing, your price is going to go up because you're able, you know, you want, you have your supply but people are wanting it heavily so the price can go increase. And then the last law, if the supply stays the same, you have a typical supply that you normally have but the demand decreases, then your price will have to go down in order to try to sell the extra supply that you have remaining. A really good example of this fourth law is right now is the gas station. Um, that you drive around and you see right now because of coronavirus and COVID-19 um, gas is really cheap right now because it's not as in high demand anymore so the demand has decreased they still have the supply of gas so they're charging less for gas because not as many people are driving places anymore because most people are stuck at home so let's do a couple examples here a new style of computer was just released last week a technology store only has five of these computers left in stock how many people or but many people really want that new computer style so what will the store do to the price all right so think about that answer the question all right practice example number two a bakery has a large supply of donuts left over from the morning because customers mostly wanted muffins instead what might the bakery do to the price of the donuts for customers who come in in the afternoon now Think about that and answer the question. All right, hopefully you got that one right. So then as you kind of work with supply and demand, if you're a store and you're selling products, you're basically trying to reach this fancy word called equilibrium, um, or eventually it just happens naturally. So basically once the supply and the demand meet at a, an equal amount, that's when the price will kind of stay set for a while. So when the supply of a product equals the demand of a product, this is called equilibrium. So basically it just kind of evens out. So you're, you have enough supply that you're going to meet the demand of your customers, and it's not going to be kind of off balance anymore. So this can change over time, right? This can change if something happens like COVID-19 that's causing the demand to go down really quickly, or just over time, certain products might be less valuable over time. But equilibrium is kind of that balancing point of where stores typically actually set their prices. The last thing I want to talk about is competition. A lot of people know what competition is, right? Whether it's Portland versus Oak Harbor or Michigan versus Ohio State, competition's everywhere. But competition's also in business all the time. So when you think about competition, let's think about um, how this would affect price in different um, marketing things that different businesses are doing. So fast food, I'm going to use that as a quick example. So we got McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King. All three fast food chains, they all have their different unique things that they're offering but kind of in a similar category of what their products are. So if you think about competition, how that affects their price, I'm going to show you just a quick example of how you might not even notice that competition is affecting people's price. So first, we have McDonald's going with this two for five mix and match deal, right? You can get the Big Mac, filet of fish, chicken sandwich, chicken nuggets, and if you, get, you can choose any two you want for five bucks. 
And then all of a sudden Wendy's comes out with the four for four deal. So then they're like, oh, you can get four products at Wendy's for four dollars. And I'm going to try to have a, a promotion at Wendy's that's going to be better than McDonald's. And then Burger King is like, hey, I, I can play with this game here, too. How about the four ninety nine King meal deal, which means I get a couple sandwiches, fries and a drink for a similar price to the other two. So as you can see, all three of these deals are very similar but what they're doing is they're competing and they're trying to get customers in their store. So when one restaurant does one thing, the other uh, fast food restaurants are trying to match that. Just recently, Burger King came out with this 10 piece nuggets for $1 deal. So I would imagine that uh, Wendy's and McDonald's will try to do something similar to that to try to get customers back in the door that Burger King might be taking. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, wanted to give you just a quick little, um, overview there of supply and demand and competition and kind of a little bit about how economic decisions are part of everyday life. If you have any questions or want to talk more about this, I love this kind of stuff. Um, we can always set up a Google meet and we can chat. Have a good day, everybody. And I will talk to you soon.